Robert, if we can, let's start off by talking a little bit about your family history. I know deep roots here. If you can just talk a little bit about what it's been like in this progression. Yeah, so I am the fifth generation in the energy business. Uh, my great great grandfather, they called him the judge. He actually was the mayor of Ardmore in 1905 ish. Um, went on to be a Supreme Court Justice for the state of Oklahoma, which is how he got the nickname the judge, and then became mayor of Oklahoma City during the World War. So um, he, he was paramount to the city's growth when he ran for mayor of Oklahoma City. It was on the platform that Oklahoma City needed an adequate water supply in order to grow. And so he dammed up what was at the time known as Bluff Creek Reservoir, and the city ended up naming it after him uh, in his honor for his efforts in, in getting that, that particular project accomplished. So it, it wasn't popular at the time either. Um, now everybody really enjoys it and all the other things kind of came with it. So um, it, it is a wonderful family legacy. My great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, they've all done wonderful things in the industry as well. Um, my grandfather, he had GHK uh, company, which for multiple decades held the world record for world's deepest well. Also highest pressured well. I think he hit liquid magma or something like that wow. at some point in time. <laughs> so it's, it's quite a tall shadow to get outside of, um, but that is kind of where I'm at right now. It, I'm my own man. I'm looking to make my own way and, um, and share my particular story. And speaking of making your own way, can you talk to us about why really the focus with Oklahoma's Anadarko Basin for you there? Uh, for me, I'm born and raised in Oklahoma City. I hated the oil and gas industry growing up. I also uh, didn't care for my name. And I was planning on leaving to one of the coasts uh, to be in the tech business. Um, ironically, my first deal I ever did out of college was a technology deal. It was a water technology. We took a publicly traded company's uh, technology perpetual license into a privately held entity. The company's name was Ecosphere Technologies. And it was, it was a fun deal, but it taught me that technology is quite difficult. And then I gained a quick appreciation for the oil and gas business and wished I had listened to my father all those years growing up. So um, as far as it is concerned now, it, it, was a, it wasn't a choice necessarily as much as it was required. So I graduated December 08, terrible time in the industry. Yeah. I couldn't get a job. No, I reached out to Aubrey, I reached out to Tom, no matter who I talked to, I couldn't even get an interview. Wow. And so I got engaged, bought a house, got married, lost my job. So it was quite hard for me Very tough. out of college. And it, it, it built character, that's for certain. Um, my whole career, all I wanted to be was an in-house guy and really was jealous of all those guys who were in-house. But it, it built something that I would have never been able to build otherwise. And so it was, it was more out of necessity than it was choice. Can you talk to me a little bit more about technology in the business right now? Uh, you know, you mentioned, of course, having an interest in it then, but look at now how many things are changing day by day with technology being utilized in the energy industry, too. Absolutely. So at Hefner Energy, we are a, fi a fintech financial technology company that happens to invest in mineral and minerals and royalties in the Anadarko Basin. So within that fintech platform, it's, it's a heavy dose of data. You have to make sure you don't have a garbage in, garbage out scenario because if your analytics are flawless but you feed it with bad data, it, it, it spits out something that's quite bad. So um, we have spent a lot of time <laughs> on our data, making sure it's, it's very quality controlled such that it feeds into the analytics properly and we have very quick responses to mineral owners who are desiring to sell their minerals, for example. Or, for example, we use technology in the sense of uh, we lifted video game technology from the video gaming industry for collision detection, so polyline to polygon detection systems, such that we can understand in space where a wellbore exists within a drilling and spacing unit. So instead of just understanding the surface hole location or the bottom hole location, for example, and prescribing all the production to either or, mm -hmm. Some of these are three mile laterals. Well, what about that middle section? And if you're only understanding surface hole location, your systems, your machines are going to put all the value, all the production in one section right. when there's three producing sections mm -hmm. in the unit. So the idea is to automate as much as you can and let machines do what they do well, which is aggregate, disseminate, transform data such that a human can make do what they do best and making strategic investment decisions. And can I talk to you a little bit uh, about right now, of course you were saying making your own name and really the, the times that are faced right now may be an uncertainty, you know, of course how uh, volatile the market can be as well. But is this a good time also for the younger generation, next generation of <laughs> leaders 
if you will, to look at how they can benefit you know, the environment and really the work that is being done to move toward that also. So I just recently, three weeks ago, was at the University of Oklahoma lecturing Mike McConnell's uh, class, who's a great friend and mentor of mine. And my, my message to that 3,000 level course what, in energy management at OU mm -hmm. was, listen guys, this is a terrible time. It's, it's going to be very difficult. You're coming out at, at what the equivalent was for me in December 2008. And so if you're going to set yourself apart, mm -hmm. you need to understand how to code. You need to understand advanced Excel. You need to understand how to model something mm -hmm. such that you're valuable the day one. You can't be learning on the job anymore. You need to be applying yourself while you're in college. And so if it, within our, our own company and our hiring process, I actually make every single candidate take a typing test for, to see how much or what their speed is when typing. If they don't meet at least 40 words a minute, they're not hireable. We found that there's a high correlation between typing speed and computer proficiency. Okay. You absolutely have to have those skills in this environment. So mm -hmm. it's things like that. Uh, um, another thing I would highly recommend to young people, especially coming out of college or currently in college that mm -hmm. want to be in this space, is understand what your strengths are. Tom Rath put out a book called Strengths Finder 2.0. I fully subscribe to his to his vision, which is we don't we don't need to be a psychologist and focus on everything that's wrong with society or everything that's wrong with you. I don't need to find what you're bad at and make you better at it. Mm -hmm. Let's find what you're good at naturally and develop those skills to where they're true strengths. So figure out what your strengths are and put yourself in a position to succeed. And really just move forward utilizing yourself. Absolutely. Good advice there. Do you have any plans to expand outside the mid-continent or are there any future plans that you would like to share with us at this moment? Um, at this moment, the next two years, we're going to be in the mid-continent, in the Anadarko Basin specifically. So we, we believe it is a multi-billion dollar opportunity for us, and we don't have the dollars to satisfy that. So um, eventually, yes, absolutely. Everything that we're building is foundational to moving to other basins, and we've built our data and analytics platform such that we can move to other basins with m much larger ease. So Oklahoma, it's a terrible state when it comes to data. And it's because we're just old. We, we're one of the oldest producing states. And that, that all that data that's been aggregated has been aggregated in a, in a manner which was 19th century technology. Yeah. We're in the 21st century and the Oklahoma Corporation Commission is just now giving $5 million to modernize our systems. So um, we've started out in what we believe to be the hardest data environment. Mm -hmm. And so we believe it's gonna be much easier for us to take steps into easier data environments. Right now in our environment, part of, part of what's going on in the oil and gas community specifically is that we're being attacked on ESG, right? We have bad governance in many, in many instances and governance is a huge piece, but also the environmental aspect, climate change. It is real, it's impacting us. The divestment movement is, is being, becoming successful. If you look at the Norwegian pension plan, the largest pension plan in the world, they have chosen to divest of fossil fuels, which for them really means divest of coal, not necessarily oil and gas. Regardless, it's having an impact. People are talking about it from coast to coast, and this is our opportunity for the first time since maybe the turn of the century or the 1980s mm -hmm. to have a voice as an industry and engage the public, and we're doing a terrible job at it. And so as, a, as an industry, I look around and I see the leaders of my industry being engineers and geologists, very technical people that demand rigor and they demand answers in the form of quantifiable objective statistics. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason, there is gray in this world too. And the reason gray exists is because there's facts on both sides. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it would be black and white. And so what I think we do very poorly and what I'm really advocating for at the moment is to get involved, have those discussions, export our energy IQ across the country in an emotional way. I would encourage everybody to go to Life Powered, uh, which is a new resource for everyone, well backed. I think they have 6.7 million for GNA this year. Bud Brigham and others are behind the effort. It, they're putting out content that really appeals to that emotion. Mm -hmm. Waking up, going through a morning routine, getting in your car and going to work. You'd be amazed the amount of petroleum in that system. You wouldn't be able to brush your teeth. I wouldn't be able to see you because I wouldn't have contacts in. Um, <laughs> my wife wouldn't have her yoga pants and that would be pretty poor yeah. and you wouldn't have any makeup. So petroleum really powers our life and that's not going anywhere. I, I, and, and once people realize that, I think the conversation changes quite quickly. Every conversation I have, coast to coast, 
people really wish they had heard this message before, that they had spoken with me earlier. And now it's, it's more of a conversation, it's not combative. Mm -hmm. And so we will address the issue of climate change and largely the coal to gas switch has caused the United States to lead the world in global CO2 reduction. Well, we really appreciate your time, your expertise, and the conversation as well, Robert. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. And you'll find more coverage from Robert and others at Doug Midcontinent on heartenergy.com. For more Heart Energy videos, follow our social media channels.